Well, we have for the third straight day, Ant, a little bit of breaking Browns news to start the show. Two days ago, it was the one-day contract for <laughs> Christian Kirksey, Rashard Higgins. Yesterday was the white face mask. And this morning, the Browns have signed offensive tackle Jermaine Effetti, hey. who came to the league with Tyvis Powell. So, Tyvis, tell the good people of the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show world what they need to know about offensive lineman Jermaine Fetty. You know, Fetty was my boy, first of all. When, you know, first round, I got, to, I got to meet him, obviously, in Seattle when he got drafted first round, and I went undrafted. Same draft class. Um, really good player. Um, bounced around the last couple of years. Fetty got, he's, a, he's really a nice guy, but he has a mean streak to him, and he had, like, this thing when he was a rookie where he had the, this holding thing going on to a point where he got into a fight with my boy Mike Bennett in, in practice. Uh, so he got a good anger streak. I think he'll be a really good project on this line. Obviously, him being a former first-round pick always helps. That means that the talent is there. I've seen him do really great things, and I've also seen him have moments where he struggled. Now, remember, I was in Seattle when he was a rookie. Since then, he's developed. I think he's made. he's done some very productive stuff in this league, and you always need another tackle. You know, when I was with him in Seattle, he was playing left tackle. Um, who was the who was the long-time left tackle there? He had he had Walter left. Walter Jones, wasn't it? No. Um, this was after Walter left. This, this guy went to the Chargers. Uh, I can't think a of his left name. tackle. Yeah, Seattle? Seattle. He went to the Chargers. He he was the one that he was like the first person that said he won his money in Bitcoin. Can't think of what. Oh, uh, Dwayne. No, not Dwayne Brown. No, I can't think of his name. But he was replacing him, who was a really productive tackle, and obviously it was a big magnifying glass there. So he struggled his first year, but he ended up pulling it together. So if Eddie's an A&M guy, yes, so Texas A&M. A little bit from he's an Aggie. He comes back to A&M. He started in the league at tackle. He started in the league at guard. He hasn't been a full-time starter since the 2021 season. But when you're looking around at there this Browns is. roster, <laughs> they have three tackles who frankly aren't healthy right now. So you need strictly bodies for camp. And I'm not sure this is just a camp body. I, I think Jermaine Effetti has a much higher upside than just a camp body like Leroy Watson or whatever guy they had in that role last year. But I'm not sure Conklin, Dewan Jones, or Jed Wills, any of those guys will be ready for full-time workload in these OTAs in this training camp period. Divis. So to bring him in, a guy with the – Pedigree he has as a first-round draft pick. He started over 40 games at tackle in the league. He has 10 starts in the interior at the guard position. So it gives you a little versatility. And working with Andy Dickerson now, I mean, I just think he, he know, he's familiar with him from Seattle. Yeah, that's so. what I was about to say. Yeah, that's yeah. Probably, that has a lot to do with it right there. Usually, familiarity. You, yeah, I know this guy. I know what he can bring. I know he can help us get through certain things. If we get in a pinch, I know I can put him in there. He'll understand the language. He'll pick up the playbook pretty easily. So... That's, a num that's another reason why you go out and get a guy like that. And Russell O'Kong was the guy who Russell, I couldn't that's think it was, of. That's yeah. A, yeah. <laughs> Who's lost a ton of weight, by the way. Have you yeah, seen yeah, him recently? Yeah, He's lost yeah. a ton of weight. But On that Joe Thomas retirement yes. plan? But back to Fetty real quick. Having a guy with that versatility on the line. Mm -hmm. And I'm a, let's just say for the sake of this, he ends up making a 53-man roster. Mm -hmm. Between him and Michael Dunn, you have two guys you feel pretty confident plugging and placing along any of the offensive line positions. And we know... Petonio is getting older. Yep. We know Pochich has dealt with some injuries. Wyatt Teller's a warrior, but he had the calf injury last year. You have three tackles who aren't pillars of elite health. So just having that versatility and the ability it, to mix and match if needed is, is Michael something Dunn, they might look at. Is Michael Dunn the only returning lineman that's guard that we got outside of Luke Whipler? Well, Because yeah. Nick Harris, Nick is, Harris, Harris is gone. Yeah. Did they bring back James Hudson or did they let James Hudson walk? What's he even a free That's agent? A good question. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think Hudson's still. I, don't, I, I feel don't like know. he is still around. I feel like he has one more year. Yeah. On his, on his well, it, at the end of the day, you need uh, you. You always want those linemen with versatility, you know. And the thing about it is, if somebody goes down, and Fetty is good because if no matter what position goes down outside of center. You can always bring him in and he can plug and play and you can keep those same four guys in there. And I think that when you go, when you look at the line, oftentimes people don't realize that when a lineman goes down, it's not necessarily, not a, more times than not, it's not who's left tackle to or who's the backup. Mm -hmm. Usually it's about who's the next best player, who's the best pl best lineman that's left. So we'll plug him in. Maybe some guy got to scoot out, stuff yeah. like that. But you always want to have your best five linemen in there. And if Fetty can serve a purpose to play all of these positions, then you don't have to worry about moving guys around. You can have a guy that can play multiple positions. Yeah, it gives you the versatility to mix and match. James Hudson does have one more year on his deal, so he is back as one of the Browns' extra tackles. But if Fetty, a guy with veteran experience, he's familiar with Andy Dickerson, Comes into the Browns now 
you hope can learn something from a Batonio, from a Teller, from a Pochich, from a Conklin, the other guys that are on this roster. And I think it's a low risk, I don't want to say high reward, but low risk move that makes a lot of sense for the team. What is he, 30 now? 30? 31, I think. Yeah, so, I mean, it ain't, it's, he's getting up there in age, but it's a, it's a veteran guy that's seen everything, all the fronts, different blitzes. He understands communication. He's been on the big stage in Seattle where he was number one pick, had to be a starter. He was productive in Chicago. So you just got a guy with versatility and, and veteran presence. That's what you want on the offensive line. You don't want a guy that you go in there, you have to worry about can he handle certain things things or if they do something tricky that they haven't seen on film can this offensive alignment pick it up you know that this guy's confident you're confident that this guy can still get things done Jason it's a free look yeah. it's the you know you say low risk high reward well it's a low risk look you know come in take a look at him you got him all through OTAs and camp and see what he's got I mean they started Jaron Christian a practice yeah. squad guy at tackle for multiple games last year but Bill so. Callahan was here yeah well you you can never have enough guys up front so and, I hope Andy really – he got some big shoes to fill, Andy yeah. Dickerson. Cause that, that Bill Callahan move, it, make, it makes you wonder, you know. Obviously, it's because his son is in t- Tennessee, but maybe that this thing is going more to a passing attack and Bill Callahan was in charge of the run game. So, maybe he was like, I'm out. Peace. Well, I, had more, I think it had more to do with his kid than anything. True, but I'm yeah. just saying, like, if the playbook is changing – Oh, the playbook's changing. My point exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. 